Um, but but do, you, do you think this is going to make much of a change, have much of an impact? <laughs> I do, actually. Um, And good morning, Anne and and Stephen. I I really do think this is a welcome move. At the moment, there's criminal sanctions put in place for people that are promoting and encouraging suicide-related activity. Self-harm is a huge issue that we we are seeing in this country, um, and it's widespread. So to bring this in line with the sanctions imposed by uh, suicide-related activity online, I think is is a good, positive step. And what, I mean, Stephen there alluded to the fact that you feel passionate about this for a very important family reason. So you know the impact this sort of online activity can eventually cause. Sadly, I do. In uh, in November 2020, so it was actually uh, two years ago to the day on Friday, um, we lost my brother Josh to suicide. He was 21 years old. And having gone through his devices, his mobile, his tablet, his laptops, he was looking at some extremely harmful material on the internet, not just to do with self-harm and suicide, but he was even provided with tips, encouragement and so on from other individuals out there. So to know that this online safety bill is now going to include um, punishment really and justice for those individuals who think it's okay to comment and write those comments online um, is is something that I'm pleased to see. However, um, the online safety bill itself has taken far too long to to come out. I mean, we've seen countless delays, countless revisions. It's seen revisions now under three prime ministers. This is an urgent bill. And the longer we leave it, the more lives, unfortunately, are going to be destroyed and the more families out there are going to feel like mine. Yeah. Um, look, I, I wonder if, I mean, something like Ripple, which, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but sort of if, if you are looking at, as well as being a place you can go for, for help, it, it, it can trigger, it can pop up automatically, can't it, if, if someone's looking at something which may be harmful. Um, yeah. Is, isn't there a need? As we, we just saw p- clips of Facebook. You know, you get, you get a mobile phone, you get a laptop, it's got Facebook already installed on it, whether you use it or not. Isn't it time for something like Ripple or some similar service to be pre-installed on every device so that if someone starts to look at something, they're, they're, you know, it's being picked up and they can, they can reach out for help? Absolutely. Um, And you've pretty much said word for word what I'm saying to social media companies and tech giants um, across the world, Stephen. So if you fancy being an ambassador there, let me know. Ripple is so, so important because it doesn't track or monitor any personally identifiable information whatsoever. But once installed, and it's a browser extension, so it can be put on Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and so on. And once installed, it means that if somebody was to conduct a similar search to my brother relating to the topic of self-harm or suicide, Ripple would intercept that search and instead provide that person with a message of hope that things would get better and signpost them to a selection of mental health resources that they can access both now and in the longer term. And to date, it's now had almost a million downloads in a, in a year. It's intercepted over 5,000 genuine harmful online searches. And as I said, even though it doesn't collect or monitor any personally identifiable information, we have actually had 24 individuals come to us directly to tell us that Ripple has saved their life.